So if there is a ground incursion, a lot of the pictures and the videos are going to change. Sadly, even though Israel is probably the most uh, army in the world that, that tries to avoid civilian casualties in, in wartime, there may be casualties. So those images are going to change. Danny Danone, a former U.S. Uh, Israeli ambassador to the U.N., said to me the other day, then is going to be when our true friends are going to stand with each other. This was Israel's 9-11. On Saturday, October the 7th, a Jewish Sabbath day, Hamas terrorists launched a coordinated assault with multiple land and air attacks into numerous border areas of Israel. This was an unprovoked and unexpected attack. Catching Israel off guard, terrorists moved quickly, murdering men, women, and children, even the elderly, with over 1,200 Israelis dead so far. 22 Americans were killed, and over 20 are missing. Over 130 hostages have been taken. Western countries led by the US have denounced the Hamas terrorist attacks and pledged their support to Israel. However, Israel is at war. So what do we as the church say? How do we respond to this crisis? You will remember that Psalm 122, verse 6, we read this. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. Israel is a land like no other. The whole country is about the size of New Jersey. And everyone at 18 joins the army or else they sign up for three years of voluntary service. Can you imagine at 18 sending off your son or daughter to join the army? And when they sign up at 18, they're given two things. They're given a gun and a Bible. And the prayer is that they will only have to use one. This year, I had the privilege of being in Israel for the very first time. Cannot tell you what a life-shifting experience that was for me, to walk where Jesus walked, to see all the biblical places suddenly come to life. But I also got to work with the most amazing team. And so many of that team, so many of those men and women that we fell in love with are now very caught up in the war and serving on the front lines. In fact, my first guest, Chaim Melspin, Chaim, what an honor um, is and a joy to see your face, my friend. But let me just ask you, first of all, how are you doing? Um, I'd say the nation is in great despair. People know either someone who has died and, uh, or someone who was kidnapped by this barbaric group um, which is the same as ISIS, and uh, people are in, in disbelief that this even happened. It's definitely not the time to ask how this could happen. It's a big question. It's a good question. But right now, we got to rescue those who are in the clutches of terror, and we have to keep it together. I'd say the only way, personally, I'm getting through this as someone who believes in the God of Israel is, is the fact that I read the scriptures. I just read, I'll just pull out Isaiah uh, 51, verse 12. Who are you that you know, who are you to fear mortal men, sons of men who are but grass? You forget the Lord, your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. You know that you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor who's bent on destruction. The cowering prisoners will be soon set free. They will not die in the dungeon, wow. nor will they lack bread. For I'm the Lord God. So, you know, people are, are, are very heartbroken right now uh, because of this situation. But we have to stand up for what's right. We will not cower to terror. And no one should. Uh, we need to stand together in this time. I'm in an elite unit right now. I can't show you around the base. It's a secret base. Um, and we are actually right going in and out of Gaza. On uh, We have special weapons and tactics that the regular army doesn't use. Um, and, and I'm from the unit Yahalom. So you can, you can Google that. 
we deal a lot with tunnel threats. And so uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. But we are uh, coming together. I'm, I'm a believer. And uh, when we look at how 260 people were, innocent people were massacred in this celebration of peace right there near the border. And I say, how is this even possible? But right now what we do is we focus on the mission at hand. And we want the people around the world to focus on prayer and reading the, the prophetic scriptures, you know, and focusing on that, not on on just worry, because you, your 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 mind is a is a battlefield of its own. We have to keep our mind focused on God, and especially us believers have to lead the way. We're an elite unit; we lead the way. We're the professionals. You guys got to be the professionals. You got to stand on God's word. I got one more for you, real quick. I know we don't have too much time, but this is what the Lord says: The people of Gaza have sinned again and again. I will not let them go unpunished. It says uh, they sent whole villages. This is Amos, Amos chapter one, verse six. They sent whole villages into exile, selling them as slaves. So I will send fire on them. It says I will send uh, I will send down fire on the walls of Gaza and on its fortresses, and it will and the fortresses will be destroyed. Amos chapter one verse six. So I just believe that it's time to dismantle this terror group, not to let. Um, They've proven they can't run uh, an area. They they oppress their people, and uh, and we just we we just look. I mean, how did this even even start? We see that anyone who says anything against them are killed. The Fatah were killed by Hamas. Hamas means violence. Look at Genesis six verse eleven in Hebrew. It yeah. says Hamas means violence. Okay, well, and just, so I just, just want to just let me say, my my brother, I want you to know that your family here in America. Uh, your brothers and sisters in Christ are upholding you. We are holding your arms up in this battle. And we will continue to pray for you. Um, you. We will touch base with you again. Chaim, thank you so much for being with us. God bless you. Mm. You know, it was so in incredible for me to be able, Chaim and I sat down on the hill where Jesus taught uh, the Beatitudes and we opened the scriptures together. And we went with, um, blessed are the peacemakers. There's so much, you know, that's why in, this, in these uncertain times, this is our textbook. The Word of God is our textbook. And one of, the, one of the joys for me over the years is the number of friends I've made who are still on the battle lines. And some of them I worked with many years ago at the Christian Broadcasting Network is actually, um, his name is Chris Mitchell. He is head of the Israeli, um, He's the bureau chief in, in Israel. And Chris, I just, what, a, what an honor it is to see you, my friend. And let me ask you as I ask Haim, how are, how are you doing um, with all the things that have unfolded around you? How are, how are you doing? Well, Shelley, it's great to see you and be with you again. Um, uh, everybody here, I think uh, everybody in Israel is struggling, uh, whether or not you're in rocket fire, which we are here in Jerusalem, or high, literally on the front lines there, uh, everybody is struggling, uh, and especially the Israeli people. A few hours ago, I talked to an Israeli friend. I said, how are you? And she said, devastated, yeah. you know, broken. I mean, that's the pretty much how many people are feeling. But as Haim said, the nation is rallying. They, they need to do what they need to do to eliminate this threat. Uh, you know, and, and so many are grieving. They, they, you know, Israel's more like a family. And I think you sense that when you were here. Yeah. Uh, you know somebody who's in the army, who's going in the army, or somebody knows somebody whose person, a relative was killed, uh, that's, that's kidnapped right now. And so it, it really is a grieving family, but a rallying family right now. Uh, but, but prayer is so important. That's why what you're doing is so valuable now to have people praying Mm -hmm. For comfort, you know, the Isaiah 40 scripture comes to my mind, comfort, comfort ye my people. And I think that's a wonderful scripture to remember that uh, that we can pray for the Jewish people, for Israel and the Jewish people around the world, because they too can be a target. What, you know, one of the things I've always loved about you, Chris, isn't just your acumen as a journalist, but your, your study of the word of God and an understanding of prophetic times and what God is doing. What do you sense from the Lord in days like these? Well, one thing I, I sense, Sheila, is that uh, in the end days, uh, the Jewish people are gonna be targets like they are now. There's gonna be this demonic hatred that rises up. And, you know, we saw this um, horrifically during the Holocaust and many people are saying we haven't seen this kind of uh, wanton slaughter of of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. 
Uh, but I, I think the Jewish people and Christians are going to be the target of the enemy during these days. And so I think it's so important for Christians around the world to support, pray, and stand with our uh, Jewish brothers and sisters in their darkest hour. And this is one of those times. Uh, so I think that's happening. And, and Sheila, we just see such tumult around the world. World, We see earthquakes and we see this horrific things that we've seen la here in Israel in the last several days. And as you said, the Word of God is our textbook during these days. And we're going to have to lean on the Word of God. We're going to have to lean on each other during these days to get us through this. Uh, because you ask questions, you wonder why. But the Word of God is where we can always turn to. We can always turn to the Lord and we can help and support each other during these times. Absolutely, and that is what we are here to do. We are here to, to pray for the nation, to pray for people, to pray for God's comfort in the midst of such un, mm. unbearable heartache. What are you seeing around you at the moment where you are? Well, Jerusalem's a bit of a ghost town right now. Uh, many businesses are closed. People have been encouraged to have 72 hours of food and food, a uh, few and water. I'm say I, I should say, um, you know, uh, the country has mobilized. Uh, you, we saw Haim there. You know, another good friend of ours, a mutual friend, Mati. He's been called up. I know several friends who are in the army right now. In fact, one of our staff members uh, was called up two nights ago. Uh, so what I'm sensing is that uh, there there is a mobilization. Uh, for this probably a ground incursion in the next few days. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of going back and forth. And I think one thing that, uh, two things, Sheila. First of all, in a week or so, if there is a ground incursion, a lot of the pictures and the videos are going to change. Sadly, even though Israel is probably the most uh, army in the world that, that tries to avoid civilian casualties in, in wartime, there may be casualties. Mm -hmm. So those images are going to change. Danny Danone, a former U.S. Uh, Israeli ambassador to the U.N., said to me the other day, then is going to be when our true friends are going to stand with each other. Yeah. And also a mutual friend of ours, Bishop Robert Stern, said to us here in the studio a few days ago, you know, this is a wonderful time to encourage your Jewish friends. Say, call them, say, we encourage you. We're standing with you. We're praying for you. And go to your local synagogue, who, which tragically maybe targets at this time, and tell them you're praying for them, you're standing with them. And so you can pray and also take action. I, I love that, Chris. You know, I was reading something that Golda Meir said so many years ago where she said, it will take time by God's grace for us to forgive you for killing our sons. It will take longer by God's grace that for you mm. having forced us to kill yours. And so we're going to be praying, and I love that encouragement to support our Jewish friends, to encourage them. And, and Chris, we just pray for God's continued protection over you. And thank you for what you are doing and for being the fragrance of Christ in a place where life is very mm. hard right now. Thank you so much, Sheila. Great to be with you. You too, Chris. Thank you.